Hello and welcome to News Across Nigeria. I'm Olumide Makoli. On the program today, President Mohamed Buhari meets stakeholders from the Niger Delta, seeks ways to end militancy in the region and stop decline in Nigeria's oil revenue. Senate rejects President Mohamed Buhari's external borrowing plan of $30 billion. And another explosion rocked Bornu State's nine casualties recorded in early morning bomb attack in Maiduguri. Thank you so much for joining us. We begin in the north central region of the country. President Muhammadu Buhari has met with Niger Delta stakeholders drawn from nine states Ondo, Imo, Akwaibom, Abia State, Delta State, Bayelsa, Rivers, Edo State, and Cross River State at the Council Chambers in Abuja with the aim of finding ways to end militancy and incessant bombing of oil installations in the region, which has led to a sharp decline in Nigeria's oil revenue. The Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, as well as Governors of Bayelsa, Delta, Imo, Okwaibum, Edo and Cross River State attended the meeting. The Secretary to the Government, Mr. Babashe Lawal, Service Chiefs as well as some members of the Federal Executive Council were also in attendance, as well as Chief Edwin Clark, former Governor of Cross River, Donald Duke, former Governor of Okwaibum, Abang Victor Ita, Ankyo Briggs, Graham Douglas, Timia Laibe, Mr. Unduka Ogwegwina, and a host of others. The Senate has rejected President Muhammadu Buhari's external borrowing plan of $30 billion for the execution of projects from 2016 to 2018. The upper legislative chamber unanimously rejected his plan when it was put to a vote on the floor of the chamber today. Before today's vote by the Senate, the President had written to the National Assembly asking them to approve a foreign loan of about $29 billion to address infrastructure deficits in the country. The Presidency had explained that the amount which is under the government's external borrowing plan was to be spent on power, railway, roads, education, health, water resources and other sectors. The request was sent via letter to the, pre uh, to the Senate President, Dr. Bukola Saraki, and Speaker of the House of Representatives, Yakubu Togara. Meanwhile, the Director General of the Debt Management Office, Mr. Abraham Wako, has been speaking on the benefits of the external borrowing plan of the federal government if it sails through. According to him, the loan will come in handy to bridge the infrastructure deficit in the country. Borrowing program, which Mr. President has pledged before the National Assembly for approval, covering three years, is for the Federation. It covers projects in all the states of the Federation. As you know, in Nigeria, there's no physical geographical location called the federal government. So all the railways, all the rural water projects, all the education and health projects, all the road projects, are in one state of the federation or the other. Many of them, it, some of the projects are multi-state projects. So Nigerians have to appreciate that, that the borrowing program before the National Assembly is presented by the president because by the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So the procedure, for example, is that states that need rural water supply, we made their submissions to the economic, I mean, International Economic Regulations Department of the Ministry of Finance, which aggregates so the package that the president has presented is a package for the whole country, including the borrowing, external borrowing interests of all the states of the federation. So that should be clear. So the borrowing is borrowing of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the federal government and the state governments. And almost all the projects are actually state projects. However, the, president, the Senate has rejected that plan on the floor of the Senate today, the National Assembly, uh, the Senate rejected the President borrowing plan when it was put to a vote. Now, in other news, nine people have been killed in a bomb explosion in Maiduguri, the Bonu State capital. The Bonu State Police Command says that the bomb went off along Gubia Road just before the military checkpoint in that location. 
The state police spokesman, Mr. Victor Isuku, says that the bomb went off in a pickup van which was conveying nine people. And about 240 Boko Haram fighters have voluntarily surrendered to the Nigerian army after they came under intense fire from troops, and that's according to the military. A statement issued by the Chief Military Public Information Officer, Colonel Mohamed Dole, says that the firepower of the Multinational Joint Task Force, Ground Troops and Joint Air Operations during the Operation Gamma Aiki forced a massive defection of remnants of the Boko Haram terrorists. According to the statement, sustained offensive operations and the blockage of logistics supply yielded the targeted results with the terrorists having to flee with their families and surrendering their arms to the nearest locations of the ground forces in the operational areas. Colonel Dole adds that the mass defection took place in Bagasola town, that's in neighboring Chad, considered by troops as a Sector 2 area of responsibility. From the northeast to the north central, in Nasarawa state, the Nigerian police and representatives of the Egon people have downplayed the rumored emergence of a new Ombatse militia suspected to be planning an attack on two villages. The commission of police says the command will continue to ensure that the lives and property of citizens are protected. In 2013, the militia called Ombatse militia, who are of the Egon tribe, were alleged to have killed about 90 policemen on their way to a village to exercise their purported responsibilities. There is no any new Ombatse milit militant group in Egon land. There is no intention or any move by the Egon people to form any militia group of whatsoever called. The said musical artist is not a representative of the Egon people as a whole. The said castle that has gated other ethnic nationalities in Nasra State is a sponsored program of those who do not wish the Egon people and the peace-loving people of Nasra State well. I was able to interact with uh, some youths, members of the youths of the Egon group, and they also denied uh, being members of the embassy or any plan, or if they have any plan with regards to emergence of that new group of the embassy. However, some of them agreed, yes, they have unions where they meet from time to time. However, there's nothing like that about formation or the emergence of Ombatsi group. So we are still on it and um, we'll continue to monitor, to take proactive measures so as to ensure that uh, no persons or group of persons will come together with the sole aim of causing problem in the Sarawa state. And now to politics, there seems to be no end in sight to the leadership crisis rocking the People's Democratic Party in Kwara State. As this Sunday, Fagwemi led executive have forcefully taken over the party secretariat in Ilorin, the state capital. Displaying placards with different inscriptions, the Ahmed McCarthy led group stormed the party secretariat amidst wild jubilation. The factional state chairman, Sunday Pat Fagwemi, told journalists that his executive committee remains the authentic leadership of the state PDP in Kwara. In his reaction, the publicity secretary of the Ali Madu Sharif faction insists that Akogu Yedeko remains the state chairman of the party. When seven members of the, of the Congress committee that was constituted by Modu Sharif when they came, five of them wrote that these people did not participate in the Congress, that we are the duly elected executive members of the Congress, of the states. Then we, our petition went there. The appeal committee upheld that we are the this, but we saw that this sit tight syndrome of these people. There must be a reason why they are doing what they are doing. Imagine them trying to force him. If we have been inside, it will it be that easy? And if they are relying on uh, their talks, I mean, talk, this talk re approach, uh, we also have the counter approach to make sure things are, but it will end up in calamity. Uh, most of our own children are not within the rank and file of these young men who use as thugs to do this havoc. And uh, I will fear, I will, I will fear are we 
to the people and to their own parents if we decide to go this way. You're watching news across Nigeria. Coming up, reactions to allegations of abuse of women and girls in internally displaced persons camps. Please stay with us.